I'm here with uh, Sheikh uh, Umar again and Dr. Umar uh, Zain again. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and Alhamdulillah. A lot of you've been asking me when his next uh, video will come out. Well, inshallah, you know, they'll be coming out inshallah very, very soon. Um, Ramadan has uh, tied me up a little bit. Mm. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Dr. Umar, thank you for uh, coming again. Alhamdulillah. So, Thank you for your invitation, alhamdulillah. Continuing on the issue of marriage, I uh, mm. wanted to present you, to you some of the other uh, case uh, cases I've had as, as, as kind of like a standard to work off of uh, in terms of the wisdom that you have and the advice that you have and mm. you particularly the method that you use, the Tawhidic mm -hmm. method. Um, <clears throat> one thing um, I've noticed especially amongst the new couples, uh, they, a lot of them have seen uh, or have a very, uh, they want to be married, but they've also, they have fears of marriage. So they've seen, yes. uh, you know, uh, they've seen a few good examples of good marriages or they've grown up in houses with uh, not very good marriages or with like the dad being a sh chauvinistic, uh, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. narcissist. Uh, man. So now this woman is married to this man. She likes him. He's cute. I like him. But uh, she's also fearful at this time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the trust because of that is very fragile. The mm. Fragile in the sense that the minute he might say no to her, she takes it as a full, re like it's like uh, a self prophecy coming true. She's Her fear is coming true every time he may say no yeah. to her about something yeah. where every time he might be angry, it's like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, see, I told myself that, you know, mm -hmm. it could happen and it's happening. And this yeah. keeps people from giving their best or their complete self mm. in the marriage. What do you have to, what advice do you have in that case? Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. May it please Allah to grant us wisdom here in this moment. Um, this is not uh, an easy question to, to answer because it, it's multi-layered. There are many, many layers of, uh, and reasons for the fear. It's not just because of uh, 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 prior experience with their parents, this sort of thing. The entire gamut of the upbringing and educational system uh, creates this fear, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, it creates a, a constant state of anxiety. And um, uh, as you say, the key word here is trust. So mm -hmm. there is a, a mistrust that is now rampant in the world. And it goes right into the bedroom, okay? Uh, and th there's several reasons for this, but the most important reason begins in the cradle. And it begins before the cradle. <clears throat> it begins in the womb, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it begins before the angel brings the soul mm -hmm. at the moment of uh, what they call the quickening. Uh, in in the traditional European uh, sense, they call this moment of the 20 weeks or the 16 weeks, whenever it occurs. Uh, they called it the quickening, when the mother could feel the, the infant already moving. But I, I want to share with you something that's very important and um, something which uh, Brother Dawood uh, Pit Pitcock uh, from England, he's the... Uh, uh, president of the Muslim uh, political party there just sent me an email I'm reminding sorry. me about um, a matter which I've already written about in my, my new book on marriage. This has to do with the uh, vibrations that uh, we that emanate from just about everything, especially from things which are organic, things which are living, okay? Um, he, there was a Japanese man who did some work with the crystallization of water, and it's very valid because um, uh, he, he, he determined that uh, 
words when they're spoken into uh, a glass of water, they have an effect on the water. Well, this is based on the homeopathic principle as well, and it all has to do with the word that we call kun faya kun. Mm. Allah spoke this word, we repeat the word, we recite the word, okay, when we pray, we recite the word when we are uh, doing our meditations, if you will, our tafakur uh, on the Quran, and all of this has an effect on uh, the environment. Now, what the Brother Dawood just brought to my attention was the fact that the negative effects on the crystallization properties of the water from the 5G radiation were counteracted by this monk who spoke into the water words of beauty and peace. Mm. After he spoke into the water the words beauty and peace or something to that effect, the water then crystallized and formed a perfect crystal that mm -hmm. was beautiful and had all the symmetry. Before that, this asymmetry, the symmetry was gone. Okay, so what we think, what we say, our intentions, they go out from us. Mm -hmm. Okay. They go out from us. So if you are radiating fear and mistrust, that's what you're going to uh, reflect. Okay, mm -hmm. because these these radiations. We look. We we are seventy percent water. Yes. Okay. Uh, our organism, our biological organism, is seventy percent water. So I want to bring this to people's attentions because these are scientific principles that are now uh, being rediscovered. I mean, uh, for example, the, the yogis knew about these years ago, and just because they're idolaters doesn't mean their science is wrong, their science mm -hmm. is correct. Just because uh, uh, a jinn is evil doesn't mean his science is incorrect. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. correct, okay? Yeah. And so, uh, and I have uh, spent some time sitting with wicked-minded people, learning science from them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what uh, reasonable, reasonable people do. Yeah. If you don't spend time with the, the enemy who knows something that you don't know, how can you defeat him? Mm. You, know? uh, you, 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 you have to understand your enemy, and if your enemy understands the dean, and understands the science more than you do, hey, you know, you he's got an advantage, and that's what's taking place now. You see, these people who are radiating the fear, they're irradiating the world with all this 5G, they know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. yep. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And <clears throat> this, whole, this whole problem now with the COVID thing, is a is a a, a, a a mesmerization, a hypnotism of the entire world, hmm. and it's because of this kind of radiation. It's because of what they speak. This speaking goes out. People receive it, and then it vibrates within them, hmm. and they're speaking fear. And so the whole world is reacting in fear. Hmm. So this is why I'm saying this, because the lady who enters the bedroom and uh, is already inculcated with this fear, she's going to negatively uh, react to her husband's advances. Mm. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I had one wife on the night of the wedding, I literally had to chase her around the bed. Mm. Okay? because of this fear, mm. and I had no idea it existed mm. until that moment arrived, you see. Mm. So I had to, you know, overcome it, and it wasn't, it was a struggle, but uh, in any case, that is there, and this is not conducive to peace. So men who have such women, they have to handle it in uh, with uh, so a, a bit more TLC. You, you have to handle your, your wife. And I'm literally saying that handle, okay? Women want to be manhandled, okay? Mm. 
They want this, okay? It is something that they must have, okay? Mm -hmm. They cannot avoid it even though they are afraid of it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, the, the desire is placed within them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's already there. You mm -hmm. can't run away from it. People try to run away from it. They run into conscience. They run into all sorts of excuses. They even become successful CEOs just to run away from it, you see. <laughs> but it is still something that must be had, okay, in order to complete themselves. You remember last time we talked, yes. we talked about completing. Khadija completed the prophet, the prophet yep. completed her, okay, this sort of thing. So this is what marriage is about. It is completing the whole, okay? And if you approach this with fear, you're not going to be able to enter in that, into that realm of Islam, which allows this peace to enter your bed and enter your physical presence, enter your psychologically, spiritually, everything. It just won't happen if you live in fear. And... The other thing here is that, you know, husbands have a, a great problem to overcome this because women are, in fact, more insecure in many ways uh, than men are, but, but they worry about more things than men do. We, we put it that way. We worry about different things. Men worry about one, one set of problems and women worry about another, okay? Women are primarily worried about relationships, okay? Mm. If you enter a room and you don't know anybody there, you enter with your wife, the man does the first thing that he does. He's looking for the A, typically A-type male. He's looking for the lion. He's mm -hmm. looking for the old lion who's yet undefeated, okay? <laughs> Who is that man? <laughs> because the first thing he wants to know is, can I take him? Mm. This is instinct, okay? okay? Do I take him or do I submit to him? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? yeah. Women don't think about this. The first thing a woman does is she finds out who's the most beautiful woman in the world and whether or not she measures up. And then she goes about the room visibly and psychologically assessing who is with whom. Mm. and whether or not they're happy. She can tell you almost instinctively and within five minutes who's with whom and whether or not they're having problems in their marriage. She mm. knows. She can see. <laughs> and uh, so these are, these are a different set of problems, okay? A man's not so much concerned about that, but he'll be interested if she brings it to his attention that so-and-so is you know, yeah. having problems with his wife and you know and then the man will automatically think okay how can i use that to my advantage you see <laughs> right. so we're, we're tactical uh and women are concerned about um their, their safety they're concerned about well is that relationship going to be a threat to me and to my household okay mm -hmm. uh in, in, in a different way than a man would be. A man would worry, you know, how to defend his household. A woman's worried about who's going to attack, okay, mm -hmm. and how they're going to attack. It's a different matter. And a woman is actually your best defense against the other woman, your, your wife, you see. She'll, she'll defend you against, uh, you know, women who, who have the wrong motivations, mm -hmm. okay, the gold diggers, that sort of thing. Um, in any case, we worry about di different things. So when people are worried about a different set of problems and you don't communicate and you don't communicate about them, you're taking all this worry into the bedroom, okay? And it affects the relationship, it affects the household and all this sort of thing. And so what do we do to counteract this? Well, the life of um, the, 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 the life of prayer here is what is important. That's the, that the, that's the point I'm trying to make here. Life uh, the life of prayer counteracts this, okay? And this kind of, the building up of trust is something that takes time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's natural for 
young couples to mistrust each other. This is natural, okay? Because, yeah, they're they're all excited and they're in love and they want to uh, consummate this lust, okay, which is part of our uh, human experience. There's nothing wrong with it under the right conditions. And marriage is the right condition. But along with that, they have these anxieties. Mm. What if I don't please him? What if he doesn't let me? What if, you know, what if she, wait, all these questions are there and they're never really truly discussed, mm. okay? It takes a while to bring these things out and put them on the table. And um, this, this is something that people learn from their uh, their own home environment environments from their parents for the most part because parents usually usually their parents generally are not honest with each other okay so here's a realm where my best advice is to talk about it okay mm -hmm. talk about these things that you are worried about confess them okay bring Be it to vulnerable. the table so you're saying, saying be, be vulnerable. Yes, yes, because um, we are vulnerable, you see. This is what nakedness is all about. It's about vulnerability. But the nakedness that we are vulnerable to is not so much the physical nakedness, it's the spiritual nakedness. Mm -hmm. And if we uh, confess to each other that, yes, we are vulnerable, uh, but yes, but we are trusting in each other to be each other's clothing, you mm -hmm. see, as the, 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 the Quran says, then uh, this overcomes that vulnerability. If you don't discuss it, you don't, uh, you're, you're not admitting that the other person is important to you. Mm -hmm. So this is an element of the level of trust that you enter into when you discuss these matters. So uh, advice to a husband is this. Okay, my advice to a husband is this. Uh, for example, when your wife does something that uh, makes that pleases you, you compliment her for mm -hmm. it. I mean, really compliment her. Not mm -hmm. just say, oh yeah, that's nice, darling, thank you, that, that. no, no. You say, oh, I love you because you do this. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite dish. Da, 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 you know, this sort of thing. Oh, thank you for taking... I, I daily thank my wife, okay, that for taking care of me. Right. I thank her every day for That's taking true. care of me, okay? So this is not something... This is something that builds trust so that when uh, a moment comes when the thing that is feared can come to the surface, it can be discussed. Mm. Um, so that's just one avenue. The other avenue in which you can reassure uh, your yeah, spouse. I just want to uh, interject here and say that's actually very superb. And, uh, you know, for anybody that's listening, because I've done counseling now for more than 10, 12, 12 years, 13 years, what you just said, I don't even hear that from, like, very experienced counselors. Mm. The idea that if you build that trust by thanking the other person, showing gratitude, that gives a cushion for that time when things will be difficult. But you yes. have to have that uh, you have to have that conversation of whatever is bothering you or whatever mistrust you have. You know, well, it also yes. reminded me of the verse of the Quran when you said that that they are, that she is a covering for uh, you know Hunna libasul lakum. She is a covering for you. And yes. you are covering for them. Yes. And uh, I, I want to uh, also bring to your attention that you might find this interesting. This particular verse was mentioned in general. It's there. It's in general. Mm -hmm. It's specifically yes. mentioned for the month of Ramadan. Is that Meaning, so? Yes, because uh, the companions of the Prophet were not having their intimacy with their wives in Ramadan, thinking that it's not allowed. And oh. then they would, they, not being sure if it's allowed or not. Mm -hmm. Allah said, no, you have to go to your wife. Like Allah basically says, Wabashi Ruhunna, definitely go to them. Mm -hmm. Meaning in the month of Ramadan, it's almost like it's like uh, an encouragement to have intimacy in the month of Ramadan. Uh, mm -hmm. 
And, and then that's where Allah says, Hunna libasun lakum. They are a covering for you. Wa antum libasun lahunna. And you are a covering. Oh, uh, that's the context. Yes. That is the context. So yes. uh, I found that interesting because I was thinking that, you know, as you go through Ramadan, as you're reflecting, you actually become more aware of your deficiencies, uh, yes. where you lack. Yes. Mm. And so your vulnerabilities, too. Your vulnerabilities. And so, you know, that's that's when you go to your wife and discuss with her, I guess, uh, whatever they are. And then they become a covering for you and you become a covering for them. But anyway, I was just throwing that in only because uh, we are in the month of Ramadan. It reminded me of that verse when you talked about vulnerability and nakedness, the, mm -hmm. that they're a covering for each other. Yes. Well, you, you don't need to look for these things. They will come, okay? Uh, these vulnerabilities, these weaknesses that we have, they will show themselves. And in the marriage, that's where they really show themselves. They show themselves in the marriage. Nobody knows you better than your mother, your father, and your spouse. <laughs> okay, They know you. <laughs> the only person that, who knows you better is Allah. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. And your angels don't even know you that well. They just take mm -hmm. notes, you know, but it's right. not a penetrating... <laughs> It's not yeah. a penetrating knowledge. Um, right. They don't know what you're thinking in your intention. Yeah, yeah, they exactly. only write what you do. Yeah, they, they don't understand, you know, motivations. They don't have this kind of soulishness. Uh, but uh, we, we have that. So when you are, I want to get back to this concept of complementary, complementarity and complementing your spouse, mm. you see. When your wife pleases her, pleases you, you you say so. When she does something uh, good uh, uh, for the general public, you make sure that you are publicly known to be proud of your wife. Oh, subhanAllah. Okay? That's a good point. Okay? To be publicly, uh, publicly known. I, this is something I do all the time uh, for my spouse. You know, it, it's just sort of personal anecdote here. I, I you know, I like to tell somebody, I, I, you know, I like to joke uh, a, a lot. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, when when uh, when I married my wife, first of all, I didn't ask her. She asked me. OK, she asked me to marry her. And uh, she said it in, in this way. We were having a conversation and she said, well, you want to marry me or not? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, "Oh, well, yes, of course I do." <laughs> and uh, that now the interesting thing is this: is that I had three other wives already at mm. the time. Now this is going back twelve years ago, and um, so I like to tell people that my wife was so good she chased the other women away. Mm. Mm. She she was so good at everything that she did, everything that she did, the other women became too jealous of her mm. and they couldn't compete. And instead of submitting to her superiority, OK, what they did was they fought with her mm. and that created, uh, of course, uh, fitna in the household. Mm. And even though I tried to overcome it, da, 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 da. in any case, the long story, the long, the short of it is she was the superior woman. And I make sure that everyone knows this. Mm. You see, I'm doing it again. See, even now. Right. Yeah. So uh, when she hears me praising her you know, at the gates of the city, at the gates of the community, that reassures her of her own identity as not only my wife and you know uh, but but as the child of god that she wants to be as mm -hmm. the servant that she wants to be because this is what's in her as a woman to be a good uh, a good wife and mm -hmm. a good mother and mm -hmm. a good uh, friend and a good companion and a good uh, you know, whatever it is that she is in her relationship with other people in the community. The husband needs to praise her, 
No. That's interesting. Uh, let me uh, uh, share with you a tradition of the Prophet, and you tell me from your perspective. I'll tell you the, the traditional understanding, yeah. and yeah. then you bring to me what you just brought, because I mm. think that adds a new dimension to this. Companions of the Prophet ask the Prophet, who do you love the most? Mm. And the Prophet said, Aisha. And they uh, said, no, that's not what we mean. Like, <laughs> you know. That's not what we mean. We mean meaning that we mean amongst the men. And then when he replied, he said her father. Again, he referred to her. Yes. Yeah. Abu Bakr. He said her father. Yeah. Yeah. Now the commentary, the traditional commentary when we read our texts, is that it was not uh, a, a very tasteful idea to praise your wife in, in or or to say you love not not praise. It was not a tasteful idea in the Arabs of that time, it was seen as a weakness uh, that you would say something about love to you, uh, mm. regarding life in public. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Prophet was doing. So that's our traditional piece yes. that every alim reads. Mm -hmm. But now you're bringing a new piece here, and I want you to further comment on that. That is sure. that by doing this, he's actually reassuring her too. You know, well, he's, he's, not, he's not just reassuring her, he's reassuring the entire community because mm -hmm. his dean is in the community and at home. So the whole mm -hmm. thing is coming together and he's reassuring, yes, I am your prophet, I am the leader of this community and I am very, very pleased with my wife. So mm -hmm. that means that my dean at home is all is fulfilled so that I can fulfill this dean in public. Okay, mm. they go together. You can't have one without the other. So hiding one and pretending it doesn't exist in public, that's just, you know, that's old. That's part from the days of Jahilaya. Okay, mm. that's from the days of, you know, this proud arrogance. Okay, and it's been carried over into, you know, present society. And that's something that should just be repented of. It should be gotten rid of. Okay, mm. because we are each other's clothing. And where do you wear your clothes? Well, you don't wear them in bed. You wear them on the street. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so and it's, you've got to bring the whole thing together. So. Yes, the prophet was breaking a taboo when he did that. Yes. He was breaking a taboo, and he broke many taboos. That's right. God yeah. bless him. He broke many taboos. That was his job. And mm -hmm. I think part of our job here, even in our you know, simple discussions that we're having, is to break these taboos. Yes. Break and the some, peop taboos. some yeah. people are going to be, you know, hell-bent to, you know, keep them intact, but they they must be broken in order for this uh, covering uh, to uh, it, it, to to allow us to overcome the fear, the insecurities, because what you're talking about at the beginning of this discussion is insecurity. Yes. If you are not making your wife secure, then I guarantee, I guarantee, that her insecurity is feeding back into you and it will reflect itself in the street. Mm. And the wise person will be able to see it. Okay. Yeah, people actually, like I can just give a case that people uh, like me or we, even yes, yourself. I mean, will, you know, actually, uh, this yes. very case mm -hmm. that I was actually thinking about had an incident in their in laws also. So it like reflects outwards, yes. right? Yes. It's, it's, so the fear that's internal then becomes an external issue later on at some point. Yes. And, and, it just, yeah. and and so I guess my question at this point is that uh, when there is mistrust, so you're saying that you should sit down with your wife and talk about whatever is bothering you or whatever is, or, or, or if it's her, she should sit down mm. with her husband. And at another time, you in one of the previous discussions, you said she should look for the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Appropriate time. Yes. Uh, I think that's also a very important point, practically speaking. Um, that, you know, she, she or he should sit down with their spouse and talk about whatever is bothering them. Um, up to what level do you take that? Uh, like, for example, 
should a guy have, and, and I know this may not be related to trust, but it's still mm -hmm. related to marriage. Should a guy sit down with his wife and say, uh, you know, I love you, but I think you've gained a lot of weight. You need to lose weight. I don't, I think a lot of the young guys at least, uh, or even older guys might find it very hard to have a conversation like that. Uh, well, this is something that you have to be proactive about. Okay. After the weight is gained, it's a bit too late. <laughs> you know, uh, and of course, this this has, doesn't have anything to do with trust. We're going off target here, but if you want to pursue that, we can. Um, this is an important uh, uh, problem now, um, and it shouldn't be, but it is. And it's because of the modern lifestyle, and it's also uh, because of a certain attitude that sets in uh, to women after they produce one or two children. They, start to act like a walrus and and uh, <laughs> and still pretend that they're uh, you know a uh, 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 beauty queen uh, uh, qualified and they're not okay but they act like it you see so uh, this is something that the husband needs to be proactive about okay mm. um and um I, I don't, for myself, I'm, I, I'm fortunate, but, uh, you know, uh, I haven't had that kind of a problem with my women in the fact, in the past. And my present wife is certainly at 61, she still approaches sweet 16 in certain ways. Um, uh, so how to overcome this? Yes, you have to be honest about it. OK, if, if you're going to tackle this problem, because it affects uh, your sexuality. Mm -hmm. And as I've said before, and I hate I, you know, I'm going to repeat myself here. Such women have disqualified themselves from the sensual realm. Mm -hmm. They've disqualified themselves as a sexual partner. OK, and the same goes for men. OK, you know, these big belly men who come home stinking and whatnot. These are grounds for divorce. <laughs> OK, a woman has grounds uh, to divorce her husband if she finds him offensive physically. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. this is I think this is under the fig. Yeah. Of course, uh, you know, so uh, part of the pro this is a real problem. Uh, and uh, the women are offended. The men are offended, you know, by each other's physical presence, not 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 just the psychological aspects. And they're even worse. Because psychological offense is, is worse than physical offense in, in many realms. So what you're doing when you have both is you're compounding the problem. And th there's no way that trust can be uh, had in this realm unless the problem is confronted. Mm. Okay, unless the problem is confronted and then spoken about honestly. Okay, there, for example, there comes a time, there came a time in in my life, and I'll be quite frank about this, uh, when my s active sexual life actually ended because I was not, f I was physically unable, okay, because of my multiple sclerosis to uh, perform the dance, okay? Mm. Now my manhood still would rise to the occasion, but I could not dance, mm. okay? This mm. is a problem. And so I, I just look to my wife and I say, darling, I'm afraid my, my, my sexual life is over, mm. okay? Because it's, it's too problematic. You, if you can't perform the act gracefully, then it's an offense, mm. see? It becomes an offense. And if you are approaching the marriage bed and you're an offense to your partner, well, what spirituality is in that? What mm. grace is in that? That's mm. a purely, purely selfish and completely uh, self-centered, it-centered uh, uh, moment. And then you are just making use of your spouse as if they're some sort of uh, property. Mm. And uh, it's obligatory on them to be offended by you mm. for your benefit. You know, this is the wrong kind of thinking. It's the wrong kind of thinking. So... There, if you can't confront these issues honestly 
and then say, it's like the prophet said, when your wife gets to a certain stage or a certain age and you no longer find her attractive, get a younger wife, but keep the old one in your house. Keep her mm -hmm. under your roof. Okay? The problem is that um, nobody wants to talk about these things honestly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when you talk about these things honestly, <clears throat> you are allowing another dimension of Allah's grace and Allah himself to enter your relationship and increase the trust factor. Mm. I can trust my husband to be honest with me. Mm. Ah, okay. It's not pleasant, but you see, the women who don't want to look in the mirror honestly will not want to listen to this. Okay. Mm. They will not want to hear what I'm saying right now. Okay. Nor will the husbands. And, you know, you have to, it comes to one point, uh, you always say, darling, look, I love you, but I don't want to have sex with you anymore because you're ugly. <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's a hard thing to say. Well, no, it's an honest thing to say. Okay? Yeah. And once you say it, it's on the table, you see. Uh, and then she has to deal with it. If you don't confront it, if it's not discussed, if it's not laid on the table, it's she's going to, uh, you know, just pretend everything's okay, and it's not okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're coming home every day. She's thinking it's okay. It's not okay, and you know, it's not been okay for five years. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that's what's <laughs> happening in a lot of marriages. So yeah. if they were honest, then. You know, at least maybe then she could say, okay, fine, I'll do this. I'll work out <clears> or I'll lose X amount of weight or... Yeah, I'll stop you know, eating the ice cream, you know, or I'll, yeah. you know, whatever it is, okay? There, there's a way. You see, look, let's look at it from a, another perspective, okay? And uh, forget all this uh, sexuality stuff. Just think about the, the, the human health aspect, Okay, and let's talk about uh, striving to be the best. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're striving to be the best, then you want to conform to that um, uh, that sine wave. You see where you have the normal, and then the first uh, 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 one or two uh, standard deviations. You want to stay within the, at least. You want to try and stay within the first standard standard deviation of what is normality. Why? Because that is the ideal. That approaches the ideal. And though you may not be able to to do it all the time, you may not make it. You should be striving to do it. You mm -hmm. see, you should not just let yourself go and become a walrus, okay? That's what a walrus does, because a walrus needs all that fat in the ocean to keep themselves warm. Mm -hmm. You're a woman. You don't need that fat, mm -hmm. okay? You're just lazy, and you're ungrateful. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, there, he said it again. <laughs> He said it again, okay, that word ungrateful. Well, it's all over in the Quran, isn't it? It's yeah. everywhere in the Quran. And so when a person is letting themselves go and they're not striving to do their best, they're showing ungratitude. They're showing ingratitude, okay, for, for what Allah has uh, given them as their best. You you look uh, um, okay. So I you know I, I'll just uh, uh, give you an example again from myself because you know it's not it's it's it, personal anecdotes are interesting. Mm. At the age of twenty eight, I was in the army and I was pretty uh, in pretty good shape, okay, mm. like most young men, and um, uh, my weight at that time was. Uh, was about 145 to 50 pounds, mm. okay, somewhere uh, thereabouts. Now I'm uh, 70 years old, 71, I'm incapacitated, and I'm not in the best of shape, but my weight has now increased to about 160 uh, pounds, 65, so I've gained about 15 kilograms mm. over, over what, how many years, 40 years? Mm. OK, and I didn't gain up until uh, just a few years ago. 
I kept my weight at about 150 pounds. Mm. Okay. All those years. Mm. Now, I'm not saying I didn't have a, you know, a few bad years where I ate or drank too much, but yes, for the most part, I kept my weight at those, at that age, at that uh, uh, realm. So men are just as responsible for keeping themselves in physical shape as women are. Women mm. are more so <laughs> because they represent a, a certain element of beauty that has uh, the responsibility to keep their man's att attraction, okay? Mm. To keep their man's attention. Women are more uh, attracted to a man emotionally than physically. Not, uh, not saying that they aren't physically, but the emotional attachment is, is, is what's stronger in a woman. Mm. But the physical attraction is just as important for the man as the emotional attraction. The emotional attraction comes, you know, over a period of time for the man. The man, when he sees, you know, I always, I always said, how do you know, I, how, how do I know I'm in love? Well, yeah, because you want to eat now, <laughs> you see. Right. Why, why do you want to eat? And I'll say this, uh, I'll bring this up because, look, ladies, listen to me carefully. There was a time when you were your husband's favorite dish, mm. okay? And if you want to remain his favorite dish, you have to qualify, mm. okay? You, you have to keep this dish cooked. You have to mm. keep it warm. You have to keep it hot. You have to, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely, yes. If you don't do that, then you will not become his favorite dish. And mm. it's not his fault. Mm. <laughs> it's not his fault. So when the prophet was very honest about these things, he said, yeah, when that happens. Yeah, 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 go on, go on. So I guess my, my next question is, is that for people that have been married 10 years, 12 years, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, things have started to slack or the attention isn't there, uh, let's say in the bedroom as much. Um, and would you not say that that ingratitude uh, from a guy's perspective leads to a type of mistrust? Ingratitude. You mean ingratitude, the the man's not gra grateful no, to the, his wife? No, ingratitude or, uh, of the wife in terms of not being responsible. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, he, what, it, this is not a question of, um, uh, of trust. This is a, a question of respect, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a matter of respect, because what happens is that, yeah, the man may... Uh, continue to trust his wife, but he's not going to respect her in the same way. Mm. You see, when you lose, when you let yourself go physically, you, that means you, you, there's a, you're, you're manifesting a certain lack of self-respect. Mm. And uh, this manifestation radiates out from you, just like the prayer or the good intention. You can't mm. help it, you know. If you are uh, if you become physically unattractive, you lose a certain amount, an element of respect in that realm. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did your husband hold you in high regard before? Because you were beautiful. Mm -hmm. You were a manifestation of Allah's beauty, you see. Mm -hmm. Allah, Allah created you to be beautiful in order to attract his intention, and mm -hmm. then you lost your beauty. Well, well, it's his fault I lost my beauty because he made me pregnant. Da, 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 da. That's nonsense. Mm. Absolute nonsense. Mm. Forget that. It's not his fault. If mm. you've lost your beauty, it's your fault. It's your fault. It may also be the fault of the community at large for not educating you properly as a young woman. Okay? This is where the elder women, you know, these big fat wal walruses sitting on the bench, uh, you know, or in the kitchen, you know, they fail to educate the younger women mm. and they give them the wrong attitudes. OK, mm. and so that these women, these young women then grow up to become the overbearing mother in law mm. <laughs> for the same reason. If you maintain your beauty, you maintain a certain element of grace. Mm. 
okay? And this grace carries over into the marriage. If you lose this beauty, then you're losing that element of the grace too, you see? You, you, this is an ingratitude, you see? Oh, I was once beautiful, but now I'm, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Yes, it matters. It matters, lady. Don't yeah. you think it doesn't? And this ingratitude uh, expresses itself as uh, uh, a loss, this loss of beauty. It expresses itself as being ugly. Mm. Okay? When you're ungrateful, you become spiritually ugly and you become physically un ugly as well. Okay? Mm. When you are grateful, then this translates into grace. And grace translates into beauty. Mm. Okay? So the graceful uh, uh, lady, the la <clears throat> let's just say a lady has, um, she's had seven children and she just can't get it back, okay? Mm -hmm. She can't get back this grace. It doesn't exist anymore. Well, then she has to transcend this realm. And she has to say, my husband, I know that um, uh, I'm no longer attractive to you. And uh, so here's my friend here, so-and-so, and she's still young and beautiful, and she's willing, and she needs a good husband, and you are a good man. Mm -hmm. You see? This should be the attitude. Mm -hmm. This should be the attitude. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because there aren't enough good men now, aren't there? <laughs> 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 and... You know, it, rather than competing with each other, dear ladies, you should be helping each other, okay? And if you've lost your qualifications as a beautiful sexual partner, you can keep them as a graceful wife, mm. okay? And then this leads us to the, uh, uh, the question of uh, uh, polygamy, Yes. Uh, um, and if you want to pursue that, uh, we, we can, but I don't know if we have enough time now to do it. But uh, I have to do that. Polygamy will be the next question on the next episode, so to okay. say. But okay. I have a case scenario. Yes. Uh, in which I think, Allah Adam, that maybe we can tie some this this case with some of the previous issues we've already mentioned. Uh, OK. And, and, and there. So there's a husband and wife. Mm. The wife does not have or has not had a good time with the husband's family, meaning the in-laws. Yes, yes. You know, we talked about the in-laws before. Yes. He uh, doesn't get along with the sisters, let's say. Uh, I'm giving a scenario, right? Yes, she doesn't get yes. along with the sisters. Now Ramadan is going to come to an end. It's going to be Eid. Families have to meet. Mm. Uh, uh, husband's like, okay, let's go to my mom's house. And she's mm. like, oh, you know, I don't do well with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I like go to my parents' house? They're in the same city. Mm. Um, so can I just go to my parents' house instead? And the husband is upset. Like, what do you mean you don't get along with my family? Right? <laughs> That's absurd is, is the way. Mm -hmm. It's absurd for you to even say that to me. Um, so, what would be your take on that? Oh my gosh! Well, you have to look at each individual case. You see, you you can't you can't give a blanket uh, uh, overview here. Uh, there are some generalities, I suppose, one could enter into, but there are reasons for incompatibility, and uh, these reasons for the incompatibility need to be discussed. They need to be. Um, on the table, just as any other uh, issues of trust, okay? <clears throat> if the husband is not uh, willing to accept uh, his wife's objections, uh, then they can't have a conversation about this. If they can enter into a conversation about it and he's willing to listen to her perspective, uh, then he's liable to learn something here from her, because after all, Allah did not give his mother or his sisters to her as a spouse. He gave this woman to him as a spouse. Mm -hmm. And that means she is his closest neighbor, you see. Mm -hmm. And this is meant to be until death, 
okay mm. uh the uh it, it, you know in the in the uh, uh in genesis uh, it talks about marriage and it talks about uh adam uh and and eve and then it talks about their children and he says for this reason a man will leave his mother and father and yes. cling to his wife yes okay so if you want to cling to your wife and you want your wife to cling to her you had better enter this realm and understand why she's having problems okay mm. with your people okay mm. they're not her people they're your people okay so mm. this is a reflection on you and it is a challenge to you clinging to her if you can't overcome this then you may just have to let you have to make you may have to uncling okay mm -hmm. if your family your mother your brother your sisters are more important than her she's going to weigh this in the scale okay and she's going Maybe. to think automatically i don't count i'm not important and that disqualifies you as her companion it mm -hmm. makes you it makes you an owner Mm. Okay, it doesn't make you a companion. That it makes you male own... chauvinism, as you were saying. Yes. yes. So what you want to do, you see, it may be as easy as this. It may be that you sit down at the table with you and you acknowledge the incompatibilities. Mm. You know? And I have done this with my wife, uh, with certain of my uh, uh, family and. Uh, and uh, they're actually, uh, I've, I've had to divorce myself from certain members, okay, of my family for her sake, mm. for her sake. Mm. And it's, this was not an unjustifiable divorce. It was because those people were actively wicked. Mm. Okay. So I had to make a decide, am I going to protect her from the, their wickedness or am I going to pretend it doesn't exist? Mm. because I always knew it existed, you see, mm. but it was never a problem for me because I had left the house and I just go to visit every once in a while, da, 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 da. But mm. if this wickedness becomes a daily or weekly imposition, this is a problem. Mm. Okay, this is a problem. And people are wicked, okay? Your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, they are sinners, okay? Mm. And some are better at it than others. Mm. Okay, and it may be that your wife just doesn't want, does, doesn't want to put up with it. Mm. Okay, there's no commandment that says she has to. Mm. She does not have to. Right, she doesn't have to, of course. Yeah. And you don't have to force her. Okay, if you want to force her, then you become her boss. You become her owner. You are no longer her companion. You've disqualified yourself, even if she remains with you. She There's no a lot of uh, Muslim couples, especially yes. the husband, that uh, choose their moms over their spouses or their family members over their spouses. Yes. And it's actually very common, I think. Yes, uh, in the Pakistani yeah. community in the in in the Indian subcontinent community in yes. the Arab community, uh, it's very common for yes, and and you know it's under a righteous claim. <laughs> yes, and yeah. the righteous claim is you know <laughs> what do yeah. you want me to you know not be nice to my family or you don't want me to go to my parents' house like how could you dare do this? Yes. But it comes many times at the cost of the wife becoming the property, uh, as you said, yes. because her considerations are not considered even. Yes, yes, this is, this is a form of injustice, okay? And uh, the thing is, it should be discussed, okay? And uh, the thing of it is, is it should, you know, you should, you should even be able to go to your father's house and say, look, we're coming, but we're only going to stay a little bit because you know as well as I do that mom is going to give my wife a hard time within the hour. Okay, mm. and if you don't, st and if you there don't stop, that, that, that could be a very common thing. I can tell you. And if you don't stop her, we're leaving. Okay, so 
but the man is too much of a coward to do this, you see. Mm. So he pretends to be, uh, he pretends not to be a coward by lording it over his poor wife. Mm. Okay. This is what happens. And I'm calling them all out now. I'm just saying you're a coward. You're a coward because you don't want to speak the truth. You don't want to confront the truth. And you're using a false sense of piety to cover your own crime here against mm -hmm. your wife, okay? Mm -hmm. Whom you swore to Allah to be her husband, mm -hmm. her protector, her provider, okay? You're, you're her clothing, okay? <laughs> You're her, you're her protector. So protect her. And if that means protecting her from your family, then this is also an obligation. Mm. It doesn't mean you have to disrespect your family. It just means you have to be honest with them. Mm. Look, Dad, I love you. Look, Mom, I love you. But I love my wife more. Mm. <laughs> OK, and yeah. you're disrespecting her. And when you disrespect her, you're disrespecting me and we'll come. We'll have a cup of tea. We'll have a meal. But then we're going. We're not going to hang around just so you can disrespect her. Mm. OK, so and if you if you say this, OK, if you get it on the table, they might just do something about it. Right. That is right. positive. But mm. if you never confront it, the problem only grows. Mm. It only grows and it gets worse and it becomes anti-grace. It becomes a force that destroys the crystals in the water. Mm. We're 70 mm. percent water. So mm. we, we, we come back there and we, you know, all of this is radiating. It doesn't matter what your outward adab is. Mm. It's foolish to pretend the adab if inwardly you're raging, okay, because this is what's happening. So with this rage radiates out and the jinn, they see the rage and they love it. Mm. They love it. Yeah. And they say, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And they just hit you all the more with it. Right. So the brave man, the good husband, protects his wife from this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And at the other extreme, he also protects his family from her nonsense. Right. Okay. You know, let's, let's just turn, turn the tables a little bit here. You know, some women are just, uh, you know, they're arrogant, prideful little twits. Okay. And they need to be put in their place. If they're not, then you just say, no, I'm not taking you to my parents' house. You don't, you, they're, they're not worthy of you <laughs> or you're mm -hmm. not worthy of their, you're not worthy of their company. You stay home until I come back and bed you, mm -hmm. you know, he can do this. You can do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. but you, some, some women who are like that, they need to be put in their place because they think they're God's gift to everybody and they're not. Mm -hmm. Okay just because they're so bloody beautiful, okay? This is not the case. This is not gratitude. Mm -hmm. This is ingratitude, yes. this arrogance, this pride. So the husband has to be the son. He has to be the, the mediator here, and he should try and do it diplomatically. And the greatest diplomacy is the tongue of honesty. Mm. You see, some of your greatest diplomats, they don't lie. They tell the right. truth very yeah. carefully. <laughs> yeah. And, and they, they say it without insulting you. If you're insulted, it's because you insult yourself by hearing it. Hmm. Okay? It's not because they're insulting. It's not because they're not speaking the truth. You, the point here I'm trying to say is that on all fronts, it is the husband's obligation to make sure that the truth is put on the table. Mm. If it's not put on the table, then there is an element of mistrust someplace in the relationship, someplace in the familial relations, somewhere. This thing has to be put on the table. You put it on the table, you deal with it. Mm. Okay. And sometimes things have to be dealt with by just, uh, separating them from you. Mm. 
I went to a period in my life where I made the prayer uh, and I literally said, uh, asked God to put things away from me, including people that are not mine by his will. Okay. And slowly but surely, this began to happen. Mm. Okay. These things, circumstances would separate us. Mm. And sometimes when the circumstances arises, the, the man has to cut. He simply has to bring the, the sword out and cut the tie mm. because it's not good. Okay. Mm. Uh, you know, it's like the, it's like the drug dealer who's the, the brother or sister, or the, the drug addict. Eventually, you have to cut them loose if they don't, if right. they don't ante up and uh, yeah. get with it. Uh, you can't put up with those kinds of people forever. Yeah, because otherwise they'll drown you. They will drown you and they will drown everything that's closest to you. Yeah. So um, these sorts of things, a man has to man up and take care of the matter by handling the truth of the matter, not by pretending it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And that is what most men are doing now, especially amongst the Muslims. They're pretending it doesn't exist and they're using a false sense of piety to cover their sin to cover their irresponsibility in this area. Mm -hmm. If they were a man, I mean, you look at somebody like Abu Bakr, okay, God rest him, you know, he would never put up with these kinds of nonsense. Mm -hmm. With Abu Bakr, my God, the truth is on the table within two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it was dealt with, okay? And this is what has to happen. The truth must be dealt with. If you're not getting along, then try to find a way to reconcile. If you can't reconcile, then separate in peace. There's no sense in staying around bumping heads. And if you're going to bump heads every time you go visit somebody, don't go visit them. See? And when they call you and say, why aren't you coming? I say, because I don't want to fight with you. <laughs> uh, every time we come we fight I don't, I'm tired of it I don't want to fight anymore if you're ready to invite me and my wife without fighting then we'll come Okay, you know this is uh, another diplomatic way of saying it how dare you be such an ungrateful son it's got nothing to do with ingratitude nothing mm. to do with ingratitude has everything to do with truth so if you want to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator, deal truthfully and honestly with each other. Mm. Don't pretend. Mm. Okay, inshallah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this was another great uh, round of discussion interview. Um, so inshallah, until next time, inshallah. Um, thank you so much.